Harbor plunged the United States into war. There were periods in the 1940s when it didn't look like we were going to win the war. And then, of course, in 44, 45, um, we got on top of it. Germany surrendered, Italy was, was out, but Japan was still, was still at war. And then um, suddenly, in August of 1945, just like that, two atom bombs are on Japan and the war is over. Within a hundred hours, two bombs hit and Japan suddenly surrenders. And the world went mad, it went mad with joy. The atomic bomb was a miracle, it was a salvation. It was a gift from God. It, it ended the war. This will be your last briefing before you go out to the forward area and take part in, a, in an atomic detonation. They just assured you just this was an exercise you were going to learn a lot. You know, and they gave you these small mimeographed handouts. If you follow instructions, you will see how it's possible to to go through an atomic explosion, knowing what you're going to do, and you'll live to fight another day. But you weren't supposed to take any photographs, you weren't supposed to make any notes, and you were to tell no one about what happened out there. All I could see was it was, seems as if the whole landscape was just a massive slit trench with soldiers like myself around them. You know? And that's when I saw these, I think it was two or three brand new two and a half ton army trucks. And then, of course, the tower was there. It looked like a giant erector set. And there were a lot of these uh, technicians climbing up and down, and they had, they had come out in jeeps, and they were wiring up. Then, when the red flare went off, we noticed that most of these technicians had finished. And they were driving away. They were speeding away. Don't worry about yourselves. As far as the test is concerned, you'll be OK. We got in the trench, and that's when we discovered the goddamn trench was only less than five feet deep. I mean, you know, when you stood in the trench, why, your chest and shoulders stood out. He was about ready to turn and get down, and this sergeant, he turned to me, and he said, uh, hey, kid, do you know how to cover your holes? And I knelt down in that trench, and I, <laughs> I faithfully covered my holes, and I tightened my mouth. And then there was this odd, weird silence. And then this curious voice. Thirty to one nine. Finally, two one zero. supreme until all of a sudden in 1949 the Russians blew off the, uh, their atom bomb and everything was shattered again. It is essential that no country gain ascendancy over the United States in the development, manufacture and tactical use of atomic weapons. People were sick of lies, sick of the threats of fascism. People were tired of propaganda and fed up with patriotic exaggeration. And there were many, many compassionate people who were heartbroken over the deceit and the crimes of communism. Because of this and so much more, people in the 50s were hungry for honest thought and honest speech in someone, anyone, finally saying something, anything from the heart. Well, the whole big movement, uh, cultural revolution of unprecedented worldwide uh extent more exuberance more a, a more celebratory open-souled uh, approach to life thinking the individual being an individual the beats produced in american culture an absence of fatalism the beats refused uh the, the fatalism that came along with the with the bomb uh that you know that uh, there would be a bomb and then there would be a bigger bomb and they refused that fatalism 
They recognized this was mad science, madder materialism. Although the beats were originally non-political, uh, others who were political were really following the beat movement to its logical conclusion. They were the guiding light of a changing consciousness, and they still are. And that's, that's really why the beats uh, continue to haunt the American mind.